we came up with an idea of how to show the public what it's really like to be an impaired driver. The idea behind it is to uh, take people that, that are not police officers, they're uh, people from all different walks of life and different professions, and we brought them out to the police academy and we got them intoxicated and we put them in cars to drive a course that we had set up out there. And really wanted to do it to see what their reactions were going to be sober, intoxicated, and then a little more intoxicated, and to see what they were going to do so we could bring it out and show the public what it's really like to be an impaired driver. DWI is a major problem we've all covered as journalists in our streets on a regular basis, right? We've all been there to cover stories about people uh, killing other people, damaging other people's lives, impacting so many people uh, in our community. So to have the chance to do it under the uh, auspices of the Houston Police Department, whose job it is to keep these guys, uh, the bad guys, off the streets, certainly is an opportunity we're interested in experiencing and bringing to our viewers. It does seem like a good idea. It's interesting, you know, the lawyer part of me, you know, is a little surprised that uh, we're able to do it. You know, you think there'd be people somewhere along the way who would say, no, maybe this isn't the best idea and what can go wrong. But I, I think ultimately it's a really good thing. If it gets attention and, and information out there, it's, that's always a plus. I mean, if it stops one or two people from, from uh, driving when they shouldn't, uh, we're all going to be better off. Drunk driving is a, is a huge problem. I have three teenage kids that are, are all driving age. Um, so. Uh, they don't live here, they live in Chicago, but I, you know, I, I feel for people who have teenage kids here because I think you know, the education for this type of thing needs to start at a young age and it, it's a problem with, with kids that age, it's a problem with adults and I, I basically just want to try and do as much as I can to make sure the roads are a little bit safer for everybody out there. It'll be a great opportunity to learn and experience firsthand and, and that's always crucial uh, in our efforts to bring the best stories to our viewers. So I've worked on cases where I've represented families who've lost loved ones to drunk drivers and so it just seems like a great uh, educational opportunity. Uh, uh, you know, it'll be a fun day but also an important day to, to teach people about the risks that they don't necessarily perceive are out there. I expect to, you know, to see how much alcohol can really affect me while I'm driving behind the wheel. It's, it's, uh, it's something that I'm sure I don't know too much about and it's good to to know how much this really can affect me and other people. I'm actually very interested to see how this all goes uh, and to see kind of you know quantitatively what the uh, what the effect on all this is. We all kind of think we're uh, bulletproof a little bit you know and that we all uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm that guy that can drive just fine even though I'm under the influence. I have a feeling I'm going to find out today that I'm, I'm wrong if I think that and just like anyone else who's going to see this they're going to find that they're wrong too. We actually took quite a few safety precautions. The first one was we, we actually closed the academy that day. The academy is not normally open to the public, but we even closed it to officers just to make sure there's not extra traffic out there. So we, we picked a Saturday when it's typically closed, but again, didn't let anybody else in. Probably the most important thing that I think we did is we used a vehicle that is designed for student drivers. So it's not a typical car off the street. It's actually got a brake in that vehicle uh, on a passenger side, and we put one of our police driving instructors in the car with the impaired drivers, and he could have stopped that test at any moment just by putting his feet on the brake. We had six drivers that we brought out there, drove them through the course that they were gonna drive later while they're completely sober. Everybody took a breath test starting out, so there's no doubt that they were sober. We had an instructor drive them through the course, and then they actually drove the course themselves while they were sober to have an idea of what it was that they were gonna be doing. The way that the alcohol was administered to everybody is uh, the exact same way that we do when we teach a standardized field sobriety testing class and we do a wet lab. So the first thing is we actually weigh these, each person, so we have their body weight, and then based on what their weight is, we administer a determined amount of alcohol to get them to the BAC that we want them at. You can feel the buzz, you can feel it. We're pretty intoxicated at this point. We're over 0.08. <laughs> How's the hair? Is it better? All right. Good. I feel good. I feel good. Um, I don't know. I... I feel good, you know. Saturday, drinking in a room with no windows. There's nothing really new going on for me right here. Each of our drinkers was given two drinks uh, during the first hour. After that first hour was over, um, whether they had both drinks finished in five minutes or it took them the full 60 minutes to finish, they're cut off. 
At that point, wait 15 minutes and you're given a breath test. After the breath test, the field sobriety tests are done. So the horizontal gaze nystagmus. The walk and turn. And the one leg stand. Each of those tests are scored and we documented those to know uh, where they were at that point. I am about halfway through uh, solid drink number two. I've had two drinks. I can tell I've been drinking. I think I can still drive, but I don't know. The course was difficult. I mean, it really took a lot to maneuver each cone, and you had to be, you know, two steps ahead to to be able to, you know, navigate each turn. There are some cones that have the name of my bumper on them out there, I think. It's, a, it's an interesting dynamic. I think it's the same thing people think when they do drive. I feel like I can drive, but there's the other part of my brain that knows, no, I probably shouldn't be driving. But consciously, you know, the, 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 uh, this, yeah, I know I can drive. After today, I'm, you know, you're really gonna know that even just drinking a little bit, how much it really affects you. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna be a good example for people as to why they shouldn't have vodka tonic before they get on the road. There's, there's no way I could drive. There's, after two drinks, there's no way I could drive. Yes, I could feel like I could drive, but I have no doubt I'm impaired right now. There were a few of the people that thought the course was difficult while they were sober, and as they became more intoxicated, they thought the course became easier, which is something that we kind of expected to see. As they're driving through the course, they would hit some cones, but not to the point where they're really blowing out a whole line of cones. But it, it shows their judgment, shows their decision making, because what they're doing is they're, they're cutting their turns a little bit short. Maybe they're turning a little bit too wide. And some of those little things that we look for out on the street is exactly what we're seeing out there on that driving course. The first thing that alcohol uh, usually impairs is your judgment. And because it, the, that is the first thing that it impairs, uh, an, an individual may not recognize that. So they feel that because I'm not stumbling over my feet, I'm not falling down, I'm okay to drive. That's the first thing we always talk about that people lose is their judgment. And as that judgment starts to go, they're going to take more risks. So they're going to drive a little bit faster. Um, and with one of our drivers, Chris, there's actually some moments where we hear him talking about how much faster the cones were coming at him. While the cones weren't moving, Chris was just driving faster. It just felt like everything went really, really, really quick. You know, every cone came at me faster than the, than the previous one. It was, uh, it was just a, a, a more rapid experience. I actually thought I drove perfectly, and they said you hit four cones. So I mean, you know, it's a good lesson in terms of you think you're fine, but you're really not. When I was completely sober, I was deathly afraid of the course. Um, when I drove it sober, I thought the course was easier than I thought. But when you're a little bit drunk versus having had a lot of alcohol, you don't see your faults. You're more aware of the dangers and what you can do and cannot do when you're sober. When you're completely drunk or have had a lot of alcohol, you're like, I can you know, you just don't have a, as much a good of a gauge of how much um, you're drinking or how well you can drive. The day that we spent at the academy showed us exactly what we expected to see. And, you know, the, the average breath test in the state of Texas is a 0.17. Um, average blood test is a bit higher than that at a 0 0.20. So the, our target BACs for this exercise were quite a bit lower um, at 0.12 to 0.14. And then we had the one person that was a little bit higher. Um, so we're not talking about people that are falling down drunk, we're talking about people that are intoxicated. We're talking about the exact same type of drivers that we see on the street every night that we're making DWI arrests on. Um, their risk taking increase, they start taking more chances as they're driving. Um, they want to drive a little bit faster, they want to cut the corners a little bit more. Um, they want to wait longer to hit the brakes when they're coming up to that red light. 
Um, and those are the things that, that we look at and that we look for when we're on the street, trying to decide whether or not we need to stop somebody. You can tell, even when the, when the number's greater than zero, the two times the number was greater than zero, you can tell when you're out on the course, you're like, wow, I shouldn't be out on this course right now. I had four drinks and, I don't know, since, since noon, and then uh, about four hours. You know, it's, yeah, it's about, it's been about four hours. Uh, and then uh, we drove cars twice. And uh, yeah, I definitely feel like I, yeah, definitely shouldn't be driving. You know, I'm a little bit surprised. As I told you before we started, I figured, you know, I might be that one guy who I'm impaired, but I'm gonna be fine. And I thought I was fine. And I think that's the lesson for everyone. You think you're fine, but you're really not. And uh, that's the lesson I learned out of this. Even when I think I'm okay, I'm not. As long as we get a ride home, and we're not driving for real, we're all good. This can only be a positive experience.